since we are talking about executives, also talk about when you know, when they are going to invest uh, resources in you know these code assistants. Um, how do you, they really know what returns they are getting? What about KPIs? How do they assess really that? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. I think I think as part of the technology assessment, they have to establish the KPIs because they have to know what it is that they're looking to solve. Uh, so the KPIs could be what are our defect rates, right? Like if and if you don't have good test cases, then you really don't even know what your defect rates are. Uh, how much time are we spending in regression fixing? So if regression if regressions are a huge problem because you have a massive complex legacy code base, then then and your intent is to bring LLMs on so that the coding can be cannot introduce that many regressions, then you know you have to figure out a way to measure that. Uh, it could be feature velocity. So are we shipping features faster? Like which specific thing are we getting better at? Um, is it um, um, is it like faster? Uh, faster time to market for uh, 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 like are are we clearing our queue of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, pull requests faster like are we like which which specific dimension of productivity are we looking at uh, did did our billables go down for our for our contractors because they were actually able to get the done get the work done faster so so again establishing the metrics in advance. And then saying, what's the what's the way in which we'll actually measure these outcomes? So that once you do activate the LLM program or the code assistant program, you're actually able to then say, yes, this is working. This is trending in the right direction. And then at some point, these will plateau out. Then the question is, do we keep the program going? Or if we've achieved these gains, like do these th- do these problems come back if we stop using it? Um, so So then you have to say like, yes, Code assistants are the tools that are making the difference in helping us being a better organization, and and that's the specific that's the, that's the type of answer you're looking for. And then you you don't really have to test it all at once on everybody. You can take smaller subgroups and really have them try out different things. Um, and that's really how you will try out different types of uh, uh, coding assistants as well. Like maybe one is better at one thing than the other, and and how do you know? So, well, you have to try it out. So, so that type of experimentation and uh, you know it, it, internal A/B testing is really what what you will have to undertake. So we we talked from the executive's perspective how they should embrace. When developers talk about how, when they kind of embrace you know this code assistant, what impact it has on their workflows? Uh, how do they integrate? Should they change the way they work, or should they adopt you know these tools? So that it is in line with the way they work. I'm always a fan of the tool bending to the user's will, <laughs> right? Um, so I think uh, there, there are two ways in which developers generally code. Uh, one is, uh, you know, inline code completion, and code completion has been around for a while. You know, you press Control Space or Command Space, and then the rest next option fills up. Um, so, so one is definitely the inline code completion, and that's really helpful. But what I found is sometimes that can be really, really problematic because it writes too much and then you have to go back and like clean it up and then fix it up. And, and that, is, that is more problematic uh, sometimes. Uh, the other thing is, uh, the, you know, you ask a specific question on a sidebar, you get a specific answer, which you may or may not like, and you can keep refining your ask until you get the answer you're looking for. And then you can copy and paste that in. And then it's a very sort of, controlled way in which your code is getting changed and you're com- completely in control of that process. Um, so, so both those workflows are possible. Um, and then I think um, uh, it's also like sometimes there's a lot of context that LLMs are missing right now. So if there's a way that LLMs can actually imbibe the totality of the project that you're working on and really make a uh, uh, make make an educated uh, uh, sort of uh, 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 option for for you to 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 write the next set of code, uh, and 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 some things I've seen like like they're getting really good at it. Like that's just that stuff is improving really fast. Um, it should uh, uh, you know I, I think developers will will be will find that uh, the inline code stuff starts to get really better uh, very quickly. But yeah, th- those are the two modes inline and copy paste and both have their place um but i'm thinking the inline work will start to get even more more evolved and faster